Hi, this is Jessica Fox filming for VETT222, uh, task 2, pack cell volume and total protein. I will point out the OCCI certificate here at the Lafayette Veterinary Clinic, and I'll review all the supplies I have here. Um, so distilled water and lab wipes. I do have a uh, microscope slide as well as my refractometer. I have um, at least one ml of a patient's EDTA blood. Um, this is Lessa Marks, and I have the patient's name, patient ID number, and date. I have microhematocrit tubes, the sealing clay, as well as the microhematocrit capillary tube reader card. All right. So getting started, I already have my gloves on. I'll go ahead and gently invert the EDTA blood four to six times. Two, three four, and five. Okay, so first step is we're going to take a microhematocrit tube. Just pop this open. We're actually gonna make two of the same exact tubes so we can balance them in the centrifuge. So I'll take two of these out. All right, and taking the first tube, you're going to insert it to fill the tube um, three quarters of the way full of the blood. So just kind of set it in there and let the blood fill the capillary tube, microhematocrit tube, excuse me. All right, so then you're going to take a lab wipe. I'm going to wipe the outside here. And then using the sealing clay, seal the end. All right, and we're going to make another tube exactly the same. Okay. Cap that because we won't need that anymore. And wipe the end, wipe the outside. And once again with the sealing clay. So then we're going to take these two tubes and place them in the centrifuge, which is over here in our lab station. All right, so we're going to balance these. I'm going to place it in slot number one. Oops. And then right across slot number two with the clay, the sealing clay to the outside edge of the centrifuge. I'll have you take a look at that. So slot one and two. Go ahead and put this on nice and tight. And this centrifuge is already preset for the amount of RPMs and time needed for this test. So we'll shut the top there and get that started. And once that's done spinning, we'll be back to complete the task. Okay, so now that the centrifuge is done spinning, we can go ahead and take a look at our samples here. All right. So it doesn't appear that these samples are hemolyzed or lipemic. Um, which is perfect. These look like great samples. So we'll go ahead, head over to our lab station and do the pack cell volume. All right, so what you're gonna do is um, place the bottom of the red cell column at the 0% and then the top of the plasma at the 100% and kind of drag this along the card reader here until those two things meet up, which is right here. So then this patient's pack cell volume is a 47%. So we'll go ahead and record that in the medical record. Uh, 47%. And move along to the total protein. All right. So you'll grab your microscope slide and just kind of slide it along the tube here to create a breaking point. And then using your fingers, you're going to break the tube where you had slid the microscope slide. Okay. Grab the refractometer. And then using the opposite end, um, we don't want any glass shards falling on the refractometer. So you're going to use the other side to gently place a sample here. Okay. Close that. And then... Um, Put it up to the light here, bring it in focus. 
And this patient's total protein is 7.1 grams per deciliter. I'll have my approved preceptor, Catherine Bollinger, come into the field and check my work. 7.1 grams per deciliter. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to record that in the patient's medical record as 7.1 grams per deciliter. The last step is to take the refractometer and the distilled water, and we're going to head on over to the sink and just clean it off so it's uh, fresh and good to go for the next person. So just some distilled water. And then dry it off using a lab wipe. All right, and this completes Paxel Volume Total Protein.